MG17 P23Q6 describe the IV characteristic of a metallic conductor at constant temperature. So we're pretty much going to describe the graph of these IV curves. And metallic conductor's curve will look something like a straight line. So this draw I against V, we just draw a straight line through. But you talk about it in words. So you got to say that this is a straight line through the origin okay hmm you must mention through the origin don't just say it's a straight line okay <laughs> you must mention through origin and this one will be a one mark okay then we go on to a diode semiconductor diode Ooh, this one the curve is a bit different no remember how the curve looks like you need to be able to remember that in order to explain the graph so for semiconductor as we mentioned in the previous theory video, you start off at a very chill, low level, and then suddenly you go up. We generally don't talk about the, the, the behind part and the negative part, so this is good enough. So, diodes only allow current to move in one direction, which is, if it's pointing this way, then current is allowed to move this way. So no negative current, you see this part? No negative current, no negative volts, don't have. You must mention that. So. Zero current uh, for the part where it's in the negative volts. So zero current for uh, negative, and why I put in bracket, negative V up till um, a bit over zero, then it will start to go up. How to describe that? Uh? Just say a little bit over zero. Lah. Until a little over zero volts. So it's going to be zero current all the way until a little bit over, then it starts to increase. Second part, we talk about the increase. So this one here, at first, will be a little bit of a, a line increasing. So we can say it starts off as a straight line. It's kind of strange to say it's a straight line. Never mind. Straight line with a positive. Actually, we don't say straight line. Okay, okay. We say a curve. Straight line doesn't make sense. Curve with a positive increasing gradient. Ah, that makes more sense. Increasing gradient. All right. So this one is where there's two marks in this question. First one, you talk about the negative part. Second one, you talk about the positive part. So that would be b1 here and b1 here by the way the curve with positive increasing gradient is in the positive v section of the graph can probably add that as a little detail all right next now we have a circuit and this way is an interesting one if you have not tried this question pause the video go try it out first okay because it's mm, it's a good it's a good brain exercise so we have two identical filament lamps once in series once in parallel with the battery. Negligible internal resistance. Best. And they give us the IV characteristic of each lamp. I suppose both lamps are the same. So that's why they only gave us one IV curve for both lamps. All right, all right. What, what do they want us to do with this? Oh my goodness, let's go. So use the information shown to determine the current through the battery in 6.1 and 6.1 A and 6.1 B. So we need to find current. I'm just going to stay at this diagram. Okay. Current. Wait, 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 wait. Current where? <gasps> Very important. Current through the battery. In other words, if we go back to this circuit, mm, they're asking us for current here and current here. Let's look at the one in series. How on earth do you use the graph to find this current? If you haven't tried this, you're like, there's not enough information. Wait, 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 wait. If these are two identical filament lamps, as what the question mentions up there, that means if 12 volts is given to them, each lamp will take an equal share because they shouldn't have the same resistance because they are in series. They have the same current flowing through them which is the same as the one going through the battery. So I would say that the first lamp would get 6 volts its share of energy and light up, 
the second filament lamp will get its share of 6 volts. 6 plus 6 equals to 12. That's the EMF that is given to these two in series. Okay, that's a good hint. So we're going to find that in first part, 6 volts. What um what current would that be? Uh? Uh, that would be somewhere here. I'll strain my eyes a little bit. This should be 2.8, right? 2, 4, 6, 8. Yes, 2.8. Okay, 2.8 going through each of these. So let's write it down. 2.8 amps. 2.8 amps. Which means there's only one loop going around. So the battery will also have 2.8 amps. Nice. Well, how about the second one? Can we use the same method? Cannot. The current in the battery actually will split into two parts. One for the first lamp one for the second lamp, so we cannot use a similar method. But the fact is, if there are two lamps in series, uh, in parallel, if 12 volts is supplied, then each of them get 12 volts. Second one, also get 12 volts. Ah, so you can find, looking at the 12 volts on the graph, let's see, this one is 4.0. Very nice. So based on that fact, it means each lamp will get four. Wow, that's a lot. Four amps. Four amps going through it. But that's not the final answer you want to give. Current of the battery is I1 plus I2. Because eventually when the current come here, they will join together and then only go back. So you need to add together four plus four, giving an eight amps through the battery. This one is how you write the answer. Okay, let's go write the answer. So our current of circuit, that one was 2.8, right? Yeah, 2.8. So I'm just going to write 2.8 amps. For 6.1b, maybe clarify a little bit since it's a two mark, two mark question here. So current through one lamp is 4 amps. So both lamp has same potential difference so they both would have four amps so current through battery equals to four plus four which is eight when you write the answer here oh you for extra a don't just write eight okay a good rule of thumb is to always keep your final answers at least two sf so 8.0 except for uncertainty everything else keep that okay so this one the first one 2.8 uh, I think that's pretty much straightforward, right? Just the A1, right? Let me check. Oh, yeah, I forgot what was. Ah, A1, yes, correct. A1. The second one, there's actually two marks. If you got mentioned somewhere that each lamp has four amps, that's C1. Or you draw on the graph and you label it like what we did just now. Okay, I didn't label it, but you can label here. C1 and then final answer A1, three marks. Now let's find the total resistance for the circuit in 6.1a and 6.1b. So for this, I'm going to zoom all the way out here. So we can see the big picture. All right, if you find it hard to see, just go full screen or something like that. But all right, let's go. So 6.1a, these two, you can treat the lamps as like resistor in series. So we're going to add together. Total resistance will be R1 plus R2. And to find resistance, you need to use Ohm's law. Oh, don't call it Ohm's law. These are filament lamps. They don't follow Ohm's law. We just call it the VIR ratio. So V equals to IR. They do not follow Ohm's law. Look at their IV curve. It's a curve. It's not a straight line. Cannot say Ohm's law. Oh, yo, yo. VIR, VIR. So R equals to V over I. Okay, so for the first lamp, what's the V? Six volts over 2.8 then for the second lamp on this left side 6 also two, six over 2.8 also okay 6 over 2.8 and that should give us a total of yeah, press calculator 6 2.8 uh, 4.3 or rather 4.2857 Final answer, you only need to have 2SF since all values were given in 2, so this is just 1. 
Okay, so in in parallel now. In parallel, the equation is a little bit more strange. It's 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 and 1 over the whole thing, which I'm lazy to write, so I just put negative 1 to inverse the whole thing. So this will be 1 over... What's the resistance of this lamp? What is r again? Oh, v over i. So v is 12, i is 4. 12 over 4 plus 1 over same. 12 over 4. This will be 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3. Inverse. You can press your calculator or you just do manual calculations. This should give you 3 over 2, which means do not write fractions. This one should be 1.5. Like this. Okay, so f uh, first mark is if I see that you got used the V over I, whether all in one calculation like this, or written explicitly, that's okay. And then you get your values 4.3 ohms, that's the first one, and 1 1.5, that's the second one. Okay, last one. Now when you do another ratio, power dissipated in the lamp, in the circuit of figure 6.1 and 6.2. In a lamp, one lamp, okay. Dissipated in a lamp, a lamp. So for power, there's a bunch of equations we can use, but I think what I will use here to find power is P equals to IV for each of the lamp. You know why I use P equals IV and not the one with R? Because you see this R, I calculate it myself. What if I calculate wrong here, then my here also wrong? Not as safe. So I, I think I prefer to use IV because I know for sure this one is... I read from the graph, there shouldn't be too much errors happening there. So... Let's do the calculation. We'll scroll down a little bit more. So you need to find the power of a lamp in A over a power of a lamp in B. So you take IV in A, IV in B. All right. So the current, let's choose this one in series. IV is just going to be 2.8 times 6 divided by... The ones in parallel, so this will be 4.0 times 12. For your big power. What is this value? Calculator. 4 times 12, that should give us 0 0.35. And this is a ratio, so don't give in fractions. Give it in the decimal place. So, this one has two marks. The first one is I see that you know one of the power equation, whichever one you use. So you are allowed to use P equals I square R or P equals to V square over R. It's fine too, as long as you, you, you show that you know how to use it. And second one, if you do your ratios correctly and get your final answer, that will be A1. All right, so that's the end of this question. A very tricky one, but a very common trap that they like to put, especially with IV curves here. You need to know parallel and series. How do they add up? What is added up? Is it current? Is it voltage? Why is it the same? Okay, but that's all for this video. We'll see you in the next one.